John Carpenter's classic Halloween is considered an indelible classic in the world of cinema, with the name Michael Myers forever attached to the horror genre's proverbial hip. I have my own personal opinions of that film, see the description for that review, but it is without question an important and groundbreaking movie. Its sequels, however, aren't generally held in particularly high esteem. As we approach the absolute, unquestionable finale of the series with next year's Halloween Ends, I took it upon myself to look back at each and every film in the series to see if they hold up, and up next is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. The debut directorial effort of Tommy Lee Wallace, most known for directing the 1990-it miniseries, the film is the black sheep of the Halloween franchise in that it doesn't feature Michael Myers, nor does it take place in that particular universe. So we're sort of the bastard child, the black sheep of the family, but that's okay. Humorously, Halloween does appear as an in-universe movie in Halloween 3. For those unaware, Season of the Witch was intended to kickstart an anthology of films that would use the Halloween name to tell different types of horror stories centered around the spooky holiday. Each year, let's come out with a new movie on the subject of Halloween, All Hallows Eve. Of course, this failed after Halloween 3 was a commercial and critical disappointment, since the dozen Halloween movies we've had since all brought back Michael Myers, for better or for worse. The decision not to use the Michael Myers character was stupid. It was, it was really ill-advised. In that sense, Season of the Witch is certainly unique in the world of horror, but will a modern audience get much out of it? Well, that's what I'm here to find out and see. Let's find out if Halloween 3 Season of the Witch holds up. The movie starts out fairly strong in my eyes. It begins as a mystery, centering around the death of a man, the death of his murderer, and an enigmatic Halloween mask, bearing the crest of a mask-making company called the Silver Shamrock. The daughter of the murdered man and the inquisitive doctor who witnesses his death go on a journey to uncover the mystery. But this is a horror movie, after all, so is the film scary? Well, it's in the middle. I actually found a lot of the kills to be rather unsettling, and the movie does a pretty good job of establishing the creepy vibe of the Silver Shamrock town. On the whole, however, I found the movie to be exceedingly cheesy, and a lot of the stuff that was supposed to be scary came off as silly or dated. Now I want to be clear, this isn't always a bad thing, and awesome movies can be cheesy or have cheesy moments. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. <laughs> but it started to get a little old with this movie. Stuff like the strings when characters appear in frame will come across as dated to modern audiences. And certain stylistic elements just came across as cheesy. I was somewhat shocked to find that Tom Atkins, who plays the lead Doctor character, wasn't the executive producer of the film, given the somewhat strange relationship between his character and Ellie, the female lead played by Stacey Nelkin. Where do you want to sleep, Dr. Chalice? That's a dumb question, Miss Grimpich. No, the most unrealistic thing about this film isn't the perfect human-like robots, or the magical Stonehenge witchcraft stuff, or the fact that apparently no parent would take the weird dangling chip off their kid's Halloween mask to discover a weird microchip thing. No, it's the fact that this 22-year-old woman would show any sexual interest in this 46-year-old man, especially at a time like this, in a nasty motel room. Her dad dies, and immediately, as they're investigating his death, she gets super horny for this guy old enough to be her dad. Saw the final three or five girls that they had selected to, to, to narrow it down, and as soon as Stacy walked in, everybody perked up. Look, I'm not trying to be ageist, I'm not trying to be sexist. Consenting adults can do whatever they want, but come on, man, really? She's known the guy for all of five minutes, and f he's not even sure she's of age. Wait, wait, wait. How old are you? Uh, relax. I'm older than I look. Literally, as I walked in the door returning from the audition, they offered me the part. I mean, that never happens, <laughs> so, so it was great. This whole aspect of the movie I found to be pretty weird and kind of creepy. I don't know, maybe things were different in the 80s, but this is definitely something that stood out to me as something that a modern audience would just find laughable. Like, do we really need to shoot a scene where this guy passionately kisses her boobs and grabs her ass? Like, who is this for? The audience? The director? 
Tom Atkins, at least in Before Midnight, when Ethan Hawke does the same to Julie Delpy, there's some justification where they're in a long-term relationship, having gone through some pretty impactful stuff together, but this is just weird. He made me feel so comfortable, and he was wonderful. There was a no nipple clause, so they could shoot my breast, but they could not shoot my nipple. And we spent a lot of time together on that film. Jeez, and then she tried to kill me at the end. What the hell was that about? Anyway, I talked longer about that than I wanted. No more long diatribes. There's a ticking clock element where something bad is going to happen on Halloween night, and it all has to do with this mysterious company. And beware, if you watch this movie, you'll have its version of London Bridge stuck in your head for weeks. Turn that down. Three more days till Halloween. Halloween, Halloween. Three more days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock. Oh my god. We find out that Ellie's father was murdered for finding out the secret of what the Silver Shamrock company is up to. Apparently, at 9pm, there's a horror movie marathon followed by a big giveaway on all three channels on TV. At this time, all of the Silver Shamrock masks will trigger with the magic of Stonehenge, which will turn all of America's kids into, like, bugs and snakes? And I guess that's the bad guy's master plan? Okay, I don't want to get all CinemaSins here, but let's break this down. So it's set up that these masks are apparently super popular with kids. Nice try. Okay, fine, but there's no possible way a significant fraction of kids in the US, which let's be generous and call them 25% of the population, are all going to get these masks. If it goes on, it means the death of millions of people, everyone watching, don't you understand that? I mean, okay, they show a bunch of kids wearing their masks over like their main costume, which is kind of weird, but they show them wearing the masks, but I can't imagine more than, what, 10% of kids, even with complete and utter maximum hype, are going to wear these specific masks, which are notably the most boring looking generic masks I can conceive of, but okay, fine. Yes, kids, you too can own one of the big Halloween three. That's right, three horrific masks to choose from. They're fun, they're frightening, and they glow in the dark. We thank Don Post for two of the three masks. The witch and the skull already existed, and we collaborated on the pumpkin. There's also the giveaway, which we're not told what the prize is. Hurry home for the big giveaway. It's almost time. Hurry home. Even if the dude was giving away a million dollars, you're not going to get each and every one of these kids to be at their TV at 9 p.m. wearing their silver shamrock masks. And even then, let's say all those kids turn into bugs and snakes at 9 p.m. Most people would still be able to get away, right? They have a demonstration, which is strange. Like, who is this demonstration for? Tom Atkinson's character just happened to be there, but whatever, that's besides the point. But the doors are locked in the demonstration. If there's suddenly a rattlesnake in your living room, most people will be able to get away. Like, it's literally just a couple of snakes and a bunch of crickets, or maybe locusts. Creepy, sure, but this is a very inefficient way to commit mass murder. I don't know, maybe release some deadly gas, or magic, or a crazy laser that targets people's faces like what happened to this lady? I don't know, but two snakes and some crickets? I mean, come on, this is amateur hour here, bub. Typical Irish, you know? Not to mention, it's not 9pm everywhere at the same time. 9pm in New York is 6pm in Seattle, which, hey, gets a shout out in the film, which I personally appreciated. But at 6pm, I'm going to be trick-or-treating with my friends wearing a big lame coat over my costume because it's raining, because it's Seattle, and then I'm coming home to gorge on candy until I fall into a coma. I don't know what the hell is going on. Watching TV is probably the last thing on most kids' minds on Halloween night. Even with the most extravagant marketing budget in the universe, you're not going to get every single child in the country to buy your masks. Tune in at the exact same time spread over four or five different or six time zones, and then you're going to need them all, or at least a huge number of them to do any real damage, to be wearing their masks at the exact time while also assuming not a single one of these apparent tens of millions of masks had their extremely obtrusive silver shamrock tags taken off. And then you're going to use the most inefficient method of mass murder ever, two snakes and some crickets. What the hell was that? This was the dude's master plan. He expected all of these chips to come together perfectly. And then what? 
It wouldn't take a super genius to figure out where these masks came from, right? I mean, there's a gigantic chip bearing his company's logo on every single one of them, right? Just a desperate director wanting to make his movie make sense. Look, there's obviously a fantasy element to this movie, so it's almost forgivable in the sense that this is supposed to be a heightened sort of reality, but I just don't think a modern viewer is going to give this stuff the time of day. It's a somewhat spooky and somewhat creative concept, but it feels more like the plot of a Goosebumps book than anything else. Anyway, I can suspend my disbelief for a lot of stuff, but these events compounded to the point of absolute lunacy, and I think modern audiences would simply not accept a single one of those premises and would find the whole thing comical. I take no responsibility for Halloween 3 or credit. I had nothing to do with it. They just sent me a nice fat check. Uh... That said, this didn't really kill the movie for me. To reiterate some positives, there are some unsettling kills, some creepy imagery, there's some good Halloween atmosphere if that's what you're into, and the initial mystery in the first hour is engaging enough. But man, it all just breaks down at the end, and I was astounded that any of this stuff passed through several people's hands before making it to the film's final script. All in all, I think the majority of modern viewers will find most of the atmosphere to be cheesy and dated. I think if they do find that half of the kills and scary moments work, they'll just end up laughing at the other half that don't. While the first hour presents a somewhat engaging mystery, I feel as though the bizarre breakdown in the final act will turn most modern moviegoers off. With all that said, I feel like I can say pretty solidly that Halloween 3 Season of the Witch does not hold up. Now what that doesn't mean is that this is necessarily a bad movie. It's not a great movie, or probably even a particularly good movie, but if you enjoy weird 80s movies, this one is probably worth seeking out, even if you and your friends just laugh at certain aspects. Like seriously, girl, you can do a lot better. I guess he is a doctor. Anyways, that's it for Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. If you liked the video, hit subscribe and tune in next week for another look back at movie and video game history. Let me know in the comments what movie or video game you'd like to see reviewed next. Thanks for watching.